Hello, everybody. Gage says it's empty. Let's go see what's in the fridge today. Hello everybody, welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews today. I do appreciate you stopping by. Look at this plain Jane bottle. And y'all probably can't read on this little ring around it. This is the uh, uh, Trappist West Berlin 12 uh, done by the monks over there in, uh, in Belgium. Uh, this is a top rank Belgian quad. Uh, I mean, uh, guys, I did this... Uh, maybe once or twice before but it's been quite a while since I've done it and uh, this is uh, the quintessential uh, Trappist Belgian quad beer produced in the world guys uh, this one I've got two of them guys one was sent to me by Jason and uh, the other one was sent to me by Rico uh, they're two different years this is the 2015 edition and I've had this one since 2015, and Jason sent it to me, and he's with the, the Brick and Barrel. Let me read you his thing. He said, following up from an email, I heard a fully uncommercialized Trappist beer. I could mention he scooped this bottle up directly from the monks while out in the Belgium countryside. This particular beer, number 12, was considered the best beer in the world by Beer Advocate, so it's quite a treat. All the info you may want to know uh, is on the cap, and quick Wikipedia search. Uh, said they enjoy my reviews and like I said this was sent to me in 2015. Uh, he asked us if you review this when I asked for a shout out to Brick and Barrel. Yes, Jason Earl and Mike were a nano brewery in the flats of Cleveland, Ohio. Just opened the tap room a couple of months ago which was back in uh, the beginning of uh, 2015. Hopefully they're still in business. Uh, for a little mention from Greg wouldn't hurt. So. Uh, Big shout out to Jason Earl and, and Mike, and hopefully your business at Brick and Barrel is doing very, very well. Uh, I do appreciate you sending it, and I apologize it's been this long. This is a pretty big beer at 10.2%. Uh, it's ranked number one on Beer Advocate in this style, guys. It is the top of the line Belgian quadruple. And it's been done by the monks there at Browery, West Berlin. West Berlin. Uh, like I said, I think I've done this. I know I've done it once, maybe twice. Uh, not sure. I didn't go back and look, guys. Uh, and like I said, uh, this is a 2015 edition. And I think Rico sent me a 2016 edition. And uh, like I said, I've, I've emptied the, the, the closet out in the celery fridge and got all these beers in there where we can review them. Uh, it's winding down. Uh, don't know how long I, and I do have another beer mouth package on the way uh, from another Jason. Uh, uh, so as long as the beer reviews, uh, I mean as the beers to continue to come in, I'm still doing reviews. But once they stop or slow down, uh, it will probably come to an end where I will not be posting every day, guys. Uh, when stuff shows up uh, or if I see something I need to pick up, uh, I'll put a review on it. But the days of me posting one every day is probably coming closely to an end. So, we shall see. Uh, over to Untapped. Untapped has it at 38 IBUs. It says here, the heaviest of the West Berlin and beers, the 12 is a quadruple style beer which can be recognized by its yellow cap. Like the other West Berlin and beers, the bottle does not have a label and the cap therefore has all the required information. West Berlin and 12 has always been rated high on beer reviews and is by some considered the best beer in the world in that style, guys. Uh, just as the other West Berlin and beers, this can only be legally purchased at the monastery, on appointment, or at a bar across the street. However, it often finds its way on the gray market where it's sold at high prices. And on this cap, it does say Trappist, West Berlin, number 12, uh, 
10.2% alcohol by volume. And their stamp here says 18.12.17. I ain't got a clue what that means since it's a 2015. I don't see 15 on that anywhere. So I don't know what those numbers mean, guys. So whatever, whatever. So with that being said, we've got the 10.2% alcohol. We got 38 IBUs and Jason's telling me it's 2015. Well, he sent it to me maybe a 2014 since he sent it to me at the beginning of 2015. I don't know when he was over there. So this could be a 2014 edition. Uh, I can't decipher those numbers on the top of the cap, guys. And that's all the information they give us. So I know it's not a 2018, and, uh, and it could be a 2012. I mean, it's possible to be a 2012. Uh, but not a 2017 because I got it in 2015. So 18 and 17 is out. So maybe it's a, a 2012. Uh, so I, I don't know, guys. I, I don't know. I didn't research and go try to find out what that code means. It is what it is. So uh, let's find out what it's about, guys, and see. I didn't go back and look at uh, any other reviews of this beer. Nice hiss, big smoke. I'm reviewing it like I've never had it before, guys, and see what happens we're going to pour this down the center unless it starts producing it had a pretty big hit so i got a feeling it's fairly well carbonated and i don't know if there's any sediment yet there is and i'm going to swirl that around i'm going to get it all in the glass guys uh, all of that will come out anyway like i said it's been cellaring uh, for quite a while Oh, that's like chocolate milk on the bottom there. I did get it all out of the bottle, I think. Because that is very, very, very much darker than what I originally poured it. Yep, it's all out of the bottle. Like I said, plain Jane bottle, no label. All the information is on the cap. It's a very murky brown beer. Looks like river water, guys. It really does. Uh, about a half a finger of head on that pour. Decent looking beer. Not a great appearance. Uh, I mean, uh, if you like a murky brown colored beer, let's get it to the nose. It smells very, smells very nice. We got some nice roasted malt in there. Maybe a hint of some caramel, toppy, black molasses. Got a nice sweetness to it for a 10.2%. Uh, this is a premium beer, uh, especially according to Beer Advocate, if they have it rated number one. Uh, so, like I said, I didn't go back and look at the reviews that I'd done earlier, guys. So, uh, I'm pretty sure I probably gave it a pretty damn good grade. Because these beers are very, very hard to get on this side of the pond. So, especially the ones that are produced over there. They did do an export version and put them in some kind of little silly six-pack uh, several years ago. Uh, so uh, I don't know if it's exactly the same beer as what you would buy at the monastery or the little place across the street that they were mentioned in here. So. But this is straight from over there. He brought it back and sent it to me. So once again, Jason, thanks again. and. Hope your, uh, your guys there at the Brick and Brow are still prospering and making some tasty beers. And if you are, send me some of them. I'll review them. All right, guys. Let's find out what we got. Cheers. Very pleasant, guys. That's a very tasty beer. Made very, very well. Trappist Monk's. Very pleasant to drink. I would say it's for as difficult as it is to get your hands on. Either have to know somebody or somebody that's been there or go there yourself. Uh, one of the rather scarce beers on this side of the pond to try to get your hands on. Now over there, maybe not so much, but. If you can only get them by, you know, appointment or across the street, and I don't know how often they brew it, but very wonderful aroma and very pleasant taste.
very smooth for a 10.2 percenter. Alcohol is very, very well hidden. It's a, and these guys, uh, the monks over there, have been doing this beer for a very, very long time. So, uh, very pleasant. Let's sip on it and we'll come back and give it a break. Alright guys, I'm back. Been sipping on it over an hour now, guys. Uh, it's definitely world class. I mean, brown sugar and caramel and toppy and some breadiness. Man, this this is a world class Belgian quad, guys. I mean, uh, these monks have been doing this for a long, 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 long time. Uh, like I said earlier, number one rated Belgian quad on their site. Uh, very tasty. And I'm thinking, like I said, this is probably, since it was sent to me in the early part of 2015, it's probably a 2014 edition. Not sure. I can't decipher those date codes on the top of the cat. Very tasty, guys. I don't show. And a lot of people compare this to some of the other beers like... I don't know, like, uh, I think it's ABT 12, see if I can get the Rocha 14 and the St. Bernardus, uh, but I don't, I mean, they're close and they're probably less expensive than what this beer is to get and where you have to go to get it, uh, for a lot of those other beers of Rocheford and uh, uh, the St. Bernardus beers are, are more available over here. Uh, so, 10 for me, world class, outstanding, uh, probably one of the best uh, Belgian quads you're going to get your hands on and get your lips to, guys. So, I mean, it's outstanding. So, over to Beer Advocate, they have a 100 world class and they say it is ranked number one according to them. Over to uh, Untapped, they have it at 4.53. Outstanding world class numbers from those guys there too on this beer. So, outstanding guys. If you've had, uh, had this beer, let me know. Especially, like I said, I think this is probably a 2014. I'm not sure. But I do have another uh, 2016 that Rico has sent me, and we're going to do that here in the next couple of days, and get it uh, and get it reviewed. So we're emptying out all the the beers from the cellar and fridges and closets and winding them down, my fans, winding them down. So if you've had it, let me know what you think. Till we meet again, let's go see what's in the fridge.